Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, and here I'm going to talk with you today about Marvel's Phase 4. And I've seen uh, rumblings about Phase 4, and I kind of got the idea because of like talking with some of my people like Justzilla and uh, Reaver uh, to kind of talk about what I'm kind of feeling with how Phase 4 could potentially go. Because I'm seeing a lot of the stuff being speculated on and everything like that. And I get everybody's kind of anxiety about this. And this is kind of interesting because it follows kind of the usual kind of also comic book patterns when you watch, uh, when you are reading these kind of things. Because you're always kind of intrigued what's going to happen when like a new creative team goes on. And this is like a massive scale kind of thing, like a ship from the Infinity Saga into this new kind of realm. Now granted, Marvel usually doesn't do stuff as much with legacy characters as like, for instance, DC does. But, going forward within the movie realm, it's gonna be kind of more advantageous for them to do it with legacy characters, kind of like Sam Wilson take over, taking over as Captain America, and other kind of characters taking more kind of central roles. Now, I understand the anxiety and not being enthused with these kind of characters, but the thing is we kind of were at this stage in the beginning with Iron Man as well, because even though at around the time that the original Iron Man movie came out, Iron Man wasn't really that big of a character. Now, granted, he was one of my favorite characters because he was a futurist and the stuff that I was getting into at that point. I really liked his character and I was looking forward to seeing what they would do. But that's me as like a Marvel Comics fan, whereas the writer world would be like, Iron Man, eh. It wasn't until they got that right casting and that right creative team around it to make that great movie to where you got RDJ doing such a pivotal Tony role that got his nice end song at the moment in Endgame. So, everybody being kind of anxious about what's going on with these newer characters, I completely get because Marvel has to reshuffle and see what kind of characters from the comics that they can put forward that will hit with audiences. And that is going to be their biggest kind of challenge, to do them, to explain the kind of lore around them, and to adapt them as well as possible. So we'll kind of have to see that because with WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I did enjoy them, but they were showing the problems of shifting to different kind of creative teams. Now, you need to do that and see what works and what doesn't. Because shifting myself into like going into Caps mode, I get people not being that enthused with him in the beginning because he kind of fit into more of the kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of feel movie but then you start getting a different kind of creative team and you get them put into like different kind of situations you get the winter soldier you get them into the avengers movies you get them kind of interacting and doing stuff and you're like okay because honestly cap is a hard sell him and superman you have to be very careful with because most of their fights go down with like moralistic kind of ideological fights. They're the best when you kind of like hit them like that. So with Cap 4 in Marvel Phase 4, that's what I'm kind of intrigued in to see how Sam will kind of deal with that stuff and them to explore him as Cap more. We got him acting as Cap, but we kind of have to see how that's going to kind of go. Now, an interesting thing that we can potentially see is for Phase 4, we're probably just going to be reintroducing a lot of characters. So we're going to be getting essentially a retread of like certain origin stories and more set up with certain characters that are still kind of tying over and shifting over. Mainly calling out like Strange, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, that kind of thing. And Black Panther as well. Though I'll get into those each as we kind of go along. This is kind of more freeform, but we're kind of going with here. The biggest kind of issue is that's going to be very hard to kind of tie one central villain together. Even though we're, we've got, like, plenty of fields of villains to go for. Uh, one kind of idea, I don't know if I'd push for this as much, is that we will potentially have the buildup of not the Avengers fighting one villain, but the Avengers potentially fighting 
the Dark Avengers. Now, DC, this would be kind of analogous to like a Legion of Doom kind of scenario. However, we haven't really had... The Dark Avengers is more of a kind of new kind of thing, and that would be an interesting kind of thing if they kind of followed the uh, kind of siege thing where Norman Osborn or some kind of villainous uh, cadre of like villains that we have seeded throughout this potential, uh, potentially throughout Phase 4, potentially working together and being like, you know what? The Avengers have the right idea. Let's all team up and fuck their shit up. That could be an interesting kind of thing, as you see this kind of being out, and you see these villains are getting their asses beat, and then they're like, I know you, I know you, and start going together like that. We kind of see this potential set up with, like, U.S. Agent, because it'd be like, okay, you got your dark analog to Cat. Now, mind you, he, had, he does act more as a hero than as a villain, but it would work within his realm to be used for a nefarious purpose and be like, fuck you, buddy, and, like, fucks off. And being like, we could see those kind of scenarios going on. Now, I don't know how well Sony would like flip over and be like, all right, you can use Norman Osborn because that would be a really kind of inch. Because then you've technically got your an not an anti Iron Man, but a nice dark foil to Iron Man where he's a complete and utter fuck nut. And seeing him using kind of Tony Tech, acting like a. Uh, different kind of Nick Fury working with like uh, Contessa and stuff like that uh, oh god that would be a kind of cool stuff now granted that's stuff that they could pull from so let's kind of delve into the kind of things that we're going to be seeing now granted one of the big ones for some reason added to phase 4 is Black Widow now I'm pretty much of the mindset that I've seen a lot of that this should have been out sooner and that I don't really count this as phase four. If anything, I would consider this an offshoot of the Infinity story since it's pretty much set after Civil War but before, like, Infinity War. Wars. Never changes. Um, it really is kind of stupid that it took so long to be like, I don't know if we could set something off around Black Widow. I mean, you set her up in Iron Man, and she worked out very well. Then you see her working with uh, Steve in Winter Soldier, and see her, of course, in the other Avengers movies as well. But you're like, okay, the, the beauty of the comic book realm is, even though you can classify them all as superhero stories, you can delve into many different genres, and a spy movie with Black Widow is a fucking no-brainer. So, my biggest kind of beef with it is it should have been out earlier, and granted, I understand the pandem pandemic has, like, fucked with it, so I'm still excited to see it, and it's like, okay, we get to learn more lore and history. I'm that kind of dude. I'm like, if it can at least serve a narrative purpose of explaining more about what's going on with the Widow's program, how, um, like, Russia would deal with like creating their own kind of Captain America uh, with Red Guard and everything like that their Winter Guard if they start bringing that into effect which could then potentially uh, uh, snowball into stuff going on with like what if instead of just the Avengers versus the Dark Avengers we have the Avengers versing a team up of like all these different kind of like superhero teams around the world because you've got Canada's got a superhero team of Omega Flight you've got all different kinds of teams around everywhere that other countries have had even though the Avengers usually operate more within the US they do have other kind of issues going on hell uh, they could bring in the Squadron Supreme which is an analogy an analogous kind of team to DC's Justice League that would bring into some interesting kind of effects. So we'll have to kind of see with that. Then we start delving into like kind of their newer kind of things. I think I understand why they kind of are doing that. They're trying to start off base four with a kind of familiarity. We'll have to see how Black Widow works out, but they could potentially be setting up the legacy Black Widow with this one as well. New Black Widow or new kind of other things going on. We'll be getting into like Shang-Chi and the Eternals, all that kind of stuff, and Shang-Chi, I'm happy to see, like, the Kung Fu stuff in a Mar as a Marvel movie, because I really like Kung Fu movies. Now, the issue gets to the effect of how well the actors are going to do with them. We've only seen the trailer so far, so for me, I really like martial arts and delving into that aspect, but the interesting stuff going on with this is that Shang-Chi, he 
is the son of pretty much a villain, and he decides to devote himself to not doing that and taking down his father's empire. Now, why it's important that it's got this stuff with the Ten Rings in it is that that is a link to, like, the Mandarin. Now, we have not actually gotten a true MCU version of the Mandarin. He's usually got Ten Rings of Power that are mystical alien technologies that allow him to do a lot of fucking shit. They can control all different kinds of things. So we'll see how that kind of works out and what kind of alien races they'll kind of introduce with that if they'll link into the Kree, Skrulls, or some other one. I hope they go for another one and kind of expand cosmically because why the fuck not? You've got aliens. Go hog fucking wild on that. So I can understand trepidation for this and being like, what's going on here? This, why do we need a kung fu movie? I'm like, because kung fu there's like a lot of kind of cool kung fu stuff going on in the Marvel comics as well that they, if they draw from, can be really fucking awesome. Now, this could also hopefully dovetail into stuff with the Iron Fist as well. Now, I did not watch the Iron Fist stuff on Netflix. Though, granted, I do like the story of Iron Fist because Daniel Rand kind of parallels stuff with Tony Stark. Not perfectly, mind you. He's like the son of like a uh, kind of multi billionaire. Or, well, I don't know. Granted, rich family, but I don't know if it's as rich as, rich as Starks. Um, it kind of fluctuates depending on not as rich as Stark, but pretty prominent. Uh, he loses his parents and gets uh, taken in the city of Kunlun, and of course he wants to take out the dude that is responsible for his, the betrayal and learns martial arts and gets the Iron Fist, which he got by plunging his hands into a dragon's fucking heart. Okay? And he can, like, uh, focus chi and stuff into his hands. So it's like, okay, that's pretty fucking cool. And, granted, he usually teams up more with, like, Luke Cage, as we've seen, of course, in the other Marvel property as well. I haven't seen that as well, but I like these characters, and they usually team up very well. They were big uh, team up being in the 70s with their interesting kind of outfits, and they still keep that friendship going on strong in the comic books as well. So... I would hope that would work out that way. So if you're not into kung fu movies and that kind of action and everything like that, I can understand that we... I was excited for the trailer because it looked interesting and that they are still playing within the realm of, like, kung fu movies and doing, like, weird, crazy martial arts shit. So I'm like, yes, please. But I don't blame you if you're not, like, interested in that kind of character or whatnot. We'll have to kind of see how it works out. The Eternals... This one is going to be weird, definitely, for a lot of people. I would definitely kind of compare this to Thor and Doctor Strange with introducing the mystical kind of aspects. But this is more of, if you remember hearing that DC was going to do like a New Gods thing, this is analogous to like the New Gods. This is... This is kind of weird, okay? Because I'm not as versed in the Eternals as well, but I have been reading the comics that they've launched and uh, to kind of like drum up and be like, hey, who the fuck are the Eternals? It's these people. And this is going to be interesting because it can have huge kind of ramifications lore-wise for what we've seen and what we've done before because usually the Eternals are kind of like one of the first kind of big life things that the celestial beings that we've seen dealing with stuff with the infinity stones nowhere ego was a celestial and how hard it is to kind of deal with them they made the eternals and picture a society of humans where everybody has superpowers all right and you'd be like oh yeah my hero academia kind of not really they're made it's almost like everybody has like basic kind of stuff. Uh, durability, flight, energy manipulation, and then they've even got kind of things within that realm that are even kind of nuts and kind of to their own selves. The thing is, within the Eternals, they usually have uh, things that can also happen where deviants happen, where normally the Eternals are able to... Uh, are a, they pretty much look like gods. They literally are, their names have been passed down throughout our history and they are mistaken as gods, which actually peeves them off sometimes in the comics because I'm not a god, 
the Celestials were, and it's funny to kind of see that, where it's like, Jesus, by our standards, you could do all this shit, which would practically make you a god, and you're like, nah, bro, I'm not a god. There's, it just always goes to show you there's something bigger. We'll have to see how they kind of deal with this, because this one, I understand that they don't, un like, truly know how to probably market this one. Because depending upon how you do it, you're going to have some issues of being like, all right, is this just like Game of Thrones kind of stuff? Because there's some nice political entry. And the thing is, the whole Deviants thing, the Eternals are usually more kind of like your perfect kind of God kind of things. The, uh, deviants are kind of what their name implies. They deviate. Sometimes they're like ugly and have weird kind of powers or are monstrous. Why is this important? Because one of the most famous and infamous Deviants is Thanos. Who, as we've seen, snapped half of existence. So we'll have to see how they kind of do that up because, granted, it will come off more as a retcon. And I understand that. They have to handle this as well as they possibly can. And I will call them out if they don't handle this well. All right? I am I can understand not being enthused, and I definitely have trepidation as well. We'll have to see what kind of creative teams they have on and everything because... I call out problems. Falcon and the Winter Soldier had issues, WandaVision had issues, and there are Marvel movies that are like, uh, okay, that's got some issues and problems. Thor Dark World, what the fuck. But, this one is definitely going to be interesting for how the characters interact, what their kind of dynamic is, and what they're going to do. Never mind the fact that we've got like two Game of Thrones alumni in there and having them kind of scheming and figuring out what to kind of do. Because we've also got uh, the Black Knight in there. And that's a lot to have all the Eternals and then him, but he's tied to him as well. We'll have to see how that kind of jimmies out. Um, Doctor Strange, of course, I'm really excited for Into the Multiverse of Madness because he's a Sorcerer Supreme. He's really got to check that shit out and it'll be intriguing to see how they kind of do this because Wanda could be uh, an antagonistic force that joins up with Strange partway through or whatnot um, or uh, Mordo could go after her and they have to team up to like stop him if he takes the dark hold and tries to do something with it or whatnot now with the multiverse of badness that works into the effect because Strange is a sorcerer supreme he's got to protect Earth from all these weird kind of things that has a lot of potential to bring forth a lot of different things and introduce, like, mutants potentially, Fantastic Four, other kind of weird and wacky kind of shit going on there. Um, yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, of course, we got Spider-Man, No Way Home. That, we'll have to see kind of how it shakes out because I do like the setup that Spidey's got to deal with his uh, identity being introduced to the world. But we'll have to see how they go out because, of course, we have the conflicting rumors of them potentially doing a live-action Spider-Verse with, like, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield popping up and dealing with all those kinds of shenanigans. And, of course, Doctor Strange is going to be within that realm as well because in the comics, whenever Spidey kind of, like, got into that kind of shit, he kind of had Strange help him out with some, like, magical mumbo-jumbo. So I would definitely really be interested to see those two interact if they just kept it to that kind of level. I wouldn't mind a Spider-Verse kind of realm with, like, everything, but I would actually prefer just to have it as Tom Holland potentially interacting with another Avenger, of course, Doctor Strange, and him trying to think his way out and deal with what's going on there. We have also seen that Venom has got its second trailer, and I'm intrigued by it, but I'm kind of confused by it. Be mainly the tonal stuff going on. We'll have to see, because with Carnage, it needs to be rated R. If it's anything of PG-13, it's... Carnage is R. You can't fucking do it PG-13. If you attempt to do it, you're fucking yourself. Well, the roll of quarters. And... Yeah. But that's important because... They really... Sony should just look at what they're doing and be like, Okay, people like this Spider-Man. Let's just fucking jack everything into the MCU. Work out whatever it is. And just fucking deal with it because they're making money and it will give access to other stories. Why do I put this into effect? Because then we start getting into like uh, Thor Love and Thunder. 
That one is going to be a bigger kind of one, mainly because of how of all these different kind of things it's going to introduce. Because this also this is where we start getting kind of like bigger introductions for potential really big kind of big bads. Even though one of the big bads is kind of linked in like um, Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. So, Thor: Love and Thunder, we have had that Russell Crowe is confirmed as Zeus in this. Why is that important? Because the uh, Greek pantheon of gods is also in the Marvel Universe as well. And uh, Hercules is a big kind of Avenger as well. So I'd be like, hey, that's pretty kind of cool. So we're, we're getting introduced to a potential other pantheon as well. And uh, I don't have a problem with the whole Jane uh, as Thor storyline. My whole issue is the logistics of it. Mjolnir was destroyed. That means that somebody's got to reforge Mjolnir. Now, granted, it wasn't that hard to create Stormbreaker, but that means Thor's going to have to go out there and be like, I don't want to really, really be Thor anymore, and could do his own kind of thing, and kind of crack that out and give that to her, have to, of course, do the whole new of the worthiness. Again, it gets down to the execution of how it's going to be done. I liked Thor Ragnarok, so I've got uh, faith in Taika Waititi, so hopefully he's able to work it out and be like, all right, cool. The bigger kind of part for the villain-wise... Now, granted, Zeus can do some villainous stuff as well, but he's never... He's more kind of like fucking doing his own kind of shit. It was happened with all kind of all-father kind of figures. Gore the God Butcher. Now, this one is a stretch in a handbasket here right now. All right? And then you're going to be looking at me like, what the fuck? Okay? You're going to be like, this sounds fucking stupid. Okay? Yes. This is a possibility, and this is the potential they could do. They're probably going to fucking ignore anything anyway and be like, I'm going to do my own stuff, huff the fart, and then be like, ah, oh, shit, you shouldn't have fucking done that. So, Gore the God Butcher is an interesting character because Jason Aaron introduced him and that he was part of a group of people and, like, they were pretty much dying and they were trying to pray to gods and nothing was happening. And then two gods fell from the sky, one light god, one dark god, and... He found the thing, and he got this thing called the Necrosword. And he used it to pretty much try and kill all the gods within existence, which is pretty good that they're introducing the other pantheons to actually show that kind of credible threat. Now, this brings all different kind of time stuff and everything going on, but we learn later that the Necrosword was actually the first uh, symbiote ever created by this entity called Null. Why is Null important? Because the Celestials, eh, remember we were talking about them with the Eternals, created the universe and Null's like the being in the dark being like why the fuck did you do that and they're just kind of like bitch with their little light stuff well he's like I ain't fucking taking that uh, forges a sort of black darkness goes and is able to kill the celestials with this thing so that only works if you go into stuff with potentially working with the symbiotes now that doesn't necessarily preclude it from going on. Null is like a supreme kind of like like, woo, that's scary Thanos level stuff where depending upon how you like work his creature powers, they're either symbiotes or you could be like beings created from eternal darkness which is still just as terrifying. So that's why for me, Sony would be like we got our own little toolbox here. I'm like, yeah, but it would be fucking cooler if you blink that shit. So that is a potential route that they could do. Why do I say potential? Because the King in Black event uh, that really put Null into prominence just recently concluded. So I don't know if they would be even thinking that far in advance with it being like, since that just happened. That is a potential villain and a, like, definitely cosmic universal level where shit could go, whoot nanny baby. So, nuts there. All right. That's Love and Thunders. I, I got, honestly... No idea what they're going to be doing with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, I'm not as well versed with the Guardians of the Galaxy lore, and they're kind of playing it fast and loose. We've got 2014 Gamora that's going to probably heavily factor in as kind of Quill's quest. We'll have to see how Thor's relationship with them change or whatnot. Uh, I've heard even rumblings that potentially Beta Ray Bill could potentially take his place within the Guardians of the Galaxy in the movie and deal around with that. I don't know, but uh, that's just a rumor. I've got no hard fucking evidence or anything on that, so 
that is with the mountain of salt that get its throne from fucking Zeus. So, uh, other ones. I am intrigued to see what goes on with uh, Black Panther 2, mainly because of the loss of Chadwick Boseman. There are a lot of different kind of potentially potential routes. They could cast pretty much anyone as the new Black Panther. I could deal with Okoye being the new Black Panther, Shuri, uh, T'Challa's love interest, Mbaku, uh, no, the dude who's in charge of the Mountain Tribes. Oh, shit. There's just so many fucking things that I'm going on and around. Uh, fuck, they could even bring back Killmonger as a redemption thing. Not that it wouldn't be, not that that would be easy to do. It would be hard as fucking shit. You'd have to be like, um, did you learn your lesson to not create war upon the planet after you died? No. Okay, don't go that way. No, go back. No, no, no. Because he was pretty much set. But, of course, if you're opening the multiverse of madness, you could kind of be like, yay, uh, dude, you kind of want to help us out here and be like, hey, I'm a better kind of dude. Killmonger, why would I do that shit? Never know. You can go that. I would more go with the legacy route and potentially put someone that's already in there. That would be my preferred, but I'm not adverse to the other stuff. And then, of course, that would just be like delving potentially further into Wakandan lore and all that kind of stuff. Now, granted, since I'm into Marvel lore and into the universe and all the different connections, I, of course, would be more excited to see what these potentials can be. Now, granted, that doesn't mean I'm going to like go and jerking off everything that Marvel does. I have hope, but I will call out when they don't do shit right. It's like, uh, trust but verify kind of shit. We'll see how they kind of work out. That one, it's like, all right. Captain Marvel's, they really misstepped with that movie because I think if you're going to do Captain Marvel, they should have went all the way and instead of like having it, having her do buddy cop with Nick Fury. If you're going to do Nick Fury, just let him do his own kind of thing. That's kind of Nick Fury stuff. But I understand they wanted to try and, like, do more stuff with Marvel. Now, they're doing this as the Marvels, which is going to have Ms. Marvel from her Disney Plus and, I think, uh, Monica from, uh, uh, fuck, WandaVision in there. And them dealing with that kind of shit. We'll have to kind of see. That one's going to be the hardest to kind of put forward they're definitely going to have to reconfigure it now is it unsalvageable i don't think so i liked thor's uh first two movies but i think that they were pretty much in trouble of continuing on thor's character if they didn't get stuff right with him in the avengers and definitely in thor ragnarok because they were pretty weak even though i enjoy them i like them but there's issues pacing stuff going on story-wise it's like uh, and that's kind of what they have to do here with marvel now granted captain marvel was important in introducing this kree and the scrawl and like opening up the cosmic part with other kind of alien races which they need to fucking do stuff with because that was another big issue because you could have just fucking said it in cosmic space and understood what was going on and delved further into infinity lore with the Infinity Stones and Celestials and other stuff and potentially linked up with other stuff, but you just kept it and you're like, let's do the Tesseract again. Fucking what? Oh! Fuck nuts. And, of course, them doing what they did with the scrolls kind of hampers what the Secret Invasion is doing because you really need to hammer home that there's, like, probably a lot of diverse factions of the scrolls to get to the point of, like, these scrolls are trying to infiltrate Earth and take it over. Like, okay... Cool. What? Taters. All right, let's continue. All right. Other stuff that's potentially in phase four. Um, Blade? I'm all up for Blade and seeing vampires and more kind of supernatural elements. Now, my only kind of issue is they better use that to kind of do stuff with the Ghost Rider as well. I don't care what Ghost Rider it is, be it Johnny Blaze, Danny Ketch, or Robbie, Re uh, Robbie Reyes. All right? Robbie got done dirty in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because they were like, hey, we're going to give him his, like, Hulu show. And that fucking didn't happen. Why? I don't know, because fucking reasons. It's like, 
these are good characters and you can find the people to do them and you definitely need the story and you need the creative team to kind of like get them right iron man proves that all right and then once you start getting that machine going and you get those right creative teams you get your winter soldier you get your thor ragnarok you get your fucking uh infinity war and end game you get everything kind of going on those cylinders and you're like yeah all right so blade i'm definitely looking forward to because it could introduce a lot of stuff and we could get dracula out of it i mean granted we did get Blade's other stuff with Dracula, but I'm talking weird fucking Dracula. Like, if they just fucking went ham on supernatural stuff. Kind of the flip, the same kind of flip side with uh, Doctor Strange, and you definitely need to tie them together because they're so closely linked. Alright? Again, I am trying to point out the potential and where we've got the issues of where it could get nuts. But I'm trying to be like, all right, these are where we could go, and these are the potential pitfalls that we could have with this phase. Last one I want to talk about is Fantastic Four. This is a big one because I did enjoy, like, the Jessica Alba, uh, Chris Evans. That's so fucking weird to think about that. Uh, Fantastic Four ones. I did not see uh, the other one. With Michael B. Jordan. Not that I don't... I just heard horrendous things about it, and it just thought, okay, all right. Not that I have a problem with him being Johnny Storm, but I did not hear good things about that movie. So, with this one, this could be like a big kind of lichpin for... Oh, wait, this won't be the last one. I'm going to tie this in with um, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because it's a big kind of thing. Depending upon what goes on with uh, Fantastic Four, we get like spreading of cosmic things, parallel universe as well. It links up very nicely with the whole multiverse theory and them being brought in as well. We don't have anything on the X-Men yet, but we'll kind of hopefully get more of that. But they're like Marvel's first family, and they're explorers and travelers, and that's a big kind of cool thing because they can help explore and show different kind of... Parts of the Marvel Universe throughout those ways. So it's a very interesting kind of linchpin kind of thing if they handle it right like that. That's one aspect. Also, you got the smarts of Reed Richards, and he's a pivotal kind of dude in figuring out any kind of problems, and definitely having him on like an Avengers roster and dealing with stuff like that is going to be kind of big. He'll also kind of link up with like like a Professor Hulk kind of thing going on. We'll have to see how like She-Hulk hats out with that, like moon knight as well those kind of ones would be interesting so mainly focusing on the movies at this point let's see here so reed richards of course sue with her invisibility and her force fields johnny the thing we'll have to see if they what point in history they would bring the fantastic four in if they just got their powers or if they're established and potentially bring in uh Franklin and reveal that like he's the one that created the Marvel Universe because Franklin is of course Reed and Sue's son and he has like God creation powers now granted he has lost those kind of powers at the moment in these comic runs but that would be kind of intriguing to bring through the multiverse and be like yeah uh, thing kind of got nutty and I made it and of course uh, Valeria um, would be interesting because she's super smart like Reed now the biggest kind of uh, potential villains and stuff going on slash years would be like the Silver Surfer and Galactus. That could be tied into Thanos' stuff because he was worried about life growing unchecked. Well, what if you had... What if he had thought to introduce Galactus, this entity that would go around eating planets and worlds to make sure that life did not grow unchecked? Like, that would be an unintended consequence if they did it correctly in retconning and bringing that into the lore and weaving it in. That would be interesting. Another great villain that needs to be done is Victor Von Doom. Now, Doom is a hard character to handle because he is an antagonist, but he will also work within his best interests and preservation tactics as well. All right? So that means that he will do horrendous shit, but he will also, if things come to a horrible head, like, I don't know, Thanos came out of nowhere, he'd fucking go up against him and, of course, begrudgingly work 
with Reed Richards as he would because without a universe, uh, Doom's got nothing, so he's like, well, fuck you. And that's big because if you introduce Doom, you need to introduce Victor Von Doom to also introduce the villain that they're introducing in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Kang the Conqueror. Because Kang the Conqueror is a descendant of Victor Von Doom and is pretty much trying to control all time. He is a time-traveling crazy man that does some weird shit. He's gone into the past. He actually is a very interesting arc because one of the Young Avengers, if they decide to introduce the Young Avengers, if they're smart, is Iron Lad. Iron Lad is a younger version of Kang the Conqueror who tries not to be evil and is trying to stop himself from becoming evil and becoming the evil Kang the Conqueror, which can go into some interesting story things of if you attempt to, like, is there such a thing as fate and destiny? Is Iron Lad destined to become big old dick dude fucking around with time? Or are there ways to change that? And is this just like, is that what he's fated to become? Or is that one of the things that he was fated to become in a parallel universe? We'll have to see. So as you can see, there's all these different kind of potentials and everything throughout here. Um, one kind of thing that I hope that they do with out well, throughout phase four and beyond if they're able to kind of like make sure everything sticks and they don't fucking crash and burn the franchise which always is a possibility all right because even though you can get something too big to fail i mean warner brothers screwed themselves hard on the dc universe uh, you're just like uh, you could have just looked what marvel was doing and attempted to copy it I don't mean copy it word for word and do the exact same jokes and do the exact same thing. But I'm just talking about, like, a lot of people would have laughed at Captain America. And I'm like, uh, what you did with Cap is what you need to do with Superman. So they need to make sure that everything kind of works out. They've got a lot of potential. They've got a lot of comics history that they can get into and make really cool, good stories if they're able to do it and get the talent and the creative teams working together in harmony to make sure that that works out. And I think that this is going to be a shaky phase for the Marvel Universe, make no doubt. I do know that this is going to be the most tumultuous kind of one because they're kind of rebuilding, but the thing is they've kind of already got a base, so that's going to hamper them in certain instances and, ham and free them in other kind of instances. We'll kind of have to see. But one thing that I really want to see is I liked that there was always a Stanley cameo. And one thing that I would like to see, now granted, I've got kind of two thoughts on this. It would be really kind of cool if they essentially made Old Man Steve that kind of new cameo where he would just pop up at random at weird kind of things and be like, oh, okay, that's really kind of cool. He's still looking out for people, he's still doing his stuff. Another idea I would have is that if Chris Evans doesn't want to do that, which if I played Captain America, I'd fucking do that. But that's me. That's me. I don't hate Chris Evans for being like, you know what, I kind of want to do other shit. If they don't want to do that, I would also be open to the fact of I, w I like the idea of those cameos and having that kind of world and everything. You'd almost... I would almost find like a Marvel fan and every kind of uh, movie you kind of have that weird kind of cameo uh, either linking all of these kind of Marvel fans to like the Watchers or something like that and have that as their cameo as they're like trying to take off what's going on and just be like that kind of weird thing because that was kind of a big part and it helped it's it's a, a weird little thing you see but it was nice to kind of see it and I kind of like that kind of connection because it kind of connects you with everything kind of going on, even though you've got the characters and the stories and everything. But that's just kind of my thing that I would like to see. And if you did it, I'd like to see it done as fairly as possible for Marvel fans and being like seeing a different one each time. And that would just be really kind of cool and a way to get people involved in it more than that what they are because I don't mind just sitting in the theater and experiencing the stories. But it would be really kind of cool to see a fan and be like, yeah, that's pretty kind of cool. Or to see fucking uh, Captain America like just sitting around. Going, 
Yeah, I'm all mad cat. Doing my old mad cat stuff. Yeah. And then, of course, if they're able to carry the franchise past, like, that kind of thing, that would be interesting. But I just kind of wanted to talk about Marvel's Phase 4 and what I kind of hope and the potential that we've got, but still being able to, like, I understand not being excited about these people. Okay, because they are pulling from weird and obscure things that if you're not into the comics and you're not really looking into it, you ain't going to fucking know and be like, I'm not excited for these things. That's okay. And that's completely understandable. So we'll just have to kind of see how they're able to do this. I hope it works out more that they're able to hit more than they miss because they definitely can miss here depending upon what the character is who they cast as the character, and who, what kind of stories they try and tell with these characters. So, yeah. This was kind of interesting. I kind of, uh, kind of glad that I did this, because I was like, oh, okay, because I was seeing other people talk about it. I started talking about it with some other people, and I just kind of wanted to get my thoughts out on what's going on, on, like, the high potential that we can have, and the high potential that, like, it could get really kind of fucking messed up if the, if, it's not done right. And I say it's retcons, and the thing is, it's going to be retcons, because we've even had retcons within the Infinity Saga as well. But they've worked more than they've not, even though there are a lot of places where you're like, okay, that's kind of weird and didn't really work. So, I'm still excited for, like, Phase 4 because I'm a weird optimist. I hope, but I definitely plan for the worst. I'm like, okay, this could be really good. And then I've seen everything going to, like, hell in a handbasket. I mean, I'll have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and then that just fucking, what? And then, of course, other TV shows of, like, Supernatural and Game of Thrones, I... Motherfucker. So, yeah, those are just my thoughts right now on Marvel's Phase 4. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, um, what are your own thoughts? What are your own opinions on what you think Phase 4 is going to be doing? Uh, if you've got any other kind of, like, crazy-ass theories that you got, I'd want to hear. So, uh, that's all I got, and, uh, I hope you all have a good day.